State by 17 in the national championship last year. How many did they beat them by this year? Uh, glad you asked. 30. 82 to 52 to get to the Elite Eight. And they snapped quite a streak. The past 15 defending national champs had failed to reach the Elite Eight, the last one being Florida in 2007. And you're probably thinking, well, wasn't that the last team to repeat? Yes, that was the last team to repeat, 06 07, which UConn is on that path, getting one step closer to Phoenix, Arizona. They await the winner of Illinois and Iowa State. Back here in studio with Adam Finkelstein and welcome in Chip Patterson as well. Uh, you went to UConn. This was domination in the second half, particularly the offensive glass. What did you see? I just want to go outside and burn some couches like it was one Don't of the blame old you. days, you know? I mean, this is, uh, this, this was, I'll tell you what, in the first half, this looked like it was bound to be a tight game. Give San Diego State a ton of credit. Jaden Ledee came out. He scored in every which way to start the game. He made a statement. I think he helped his NBA stock, but that's a subplot. And they showed UConn they were here to play. UConn didn't shoot the ball very well. Donovan Klingon missed a bunch of bunnies. What happens? They came out. They just stormed them in the second half. They kept the, the lead in the first half by two things. Offensive rebounding and moving without the ball. The second half, it started to click. And they blow it wide open, which is not something that I think anybody expected, given how the first half went. Chip, it's a different player every game, right? We, we saw Donovan Klingon last game, 14 points, 14 rebounds, 8 blocks. This game, we see Cam Spencer have a great game. We see Tristan Newton continue to play well throughout this tournament. It's it's that extra pass that they'll make that you saw in the paint. They'll make that extra play. As you heard in the postgame, Dan Hurley said they want to make their teammates look good. Yeah, tough game for Kling Kong, Kling Kong, and we still have a, a really, really strong overall team performance, a really efficient team performance. Um, it is uh, one of the real amazing things about this Huskies team, the way they are able to share the responsibility that they play together as a connected unit. And if I'm to add one more wrinkle to this, how about Stefan Castle, the freshman who really was a little bit of a matchup problem for San Diego State, did a good job not only just scoring in general, but getting to the line and being aggressive. And, and that's going to be be the things that become so difficult when uh, UConn goes up against an opponent in the Elite Eight and then potentially in the Final Four and then potentially in the National Championship game is that you can try to game plan for ways to limit the 7-2 big man clinging. You can try to figure out a ways to, to blitz the ball and get the ball out of Tristan Newton's hands. But guess what? Cam Spencer sometimes is, is the one who can carry that load. And Caravan, he's the one who can step up and make those big shots from three. And yes, Stefan Castle, um, he's a he's a super talented player who on a lot of teams would have to carry a lot more responsibility but on this UConn team this title worthy UConn team he is just a, a role player and that speaks to how deep this UConn rotation is. Well, Adam, they went three of 22 from beyond the arc in their last game against Northwestern, and that was something that was a point of contention for uh, Dan Hurley. And he said, "Look, we, we got to be better." They hit 10 threes in this game. It's it's that they make these quick adjustments from game to game. They've now won nine straight by 13 or more tournament games. You know the stat that really jumps out at me? They had more offensive rebounds than San Diego State had defensive rebounds. <coughs> that is an absolutely absurd number. You know, you can calculate the, the, the offensive rebounding percentage. Forget about it. They got more off their own glass than San Diego State did. That does not happen, especially to a team like San Diego State that prides itself on its toughness, defense, and rebounding. That is unheard of. So to your point, this is a UConn team that can beat you in any number of ways, and you saw a few of them tonight because whether it's the shooting getting hot at the right time, whether it's the rebounding, whether it's the offensive execution, whether it's the defense, they can pick and choose how they're going to beat you on, in any given name, game. And Dan Hurley in the huddle, you can actually hear him say, okay, today we're going to win with this today we're going to win with that if you followed them this season you've heard kind of that those talking points within the UConn huddles well after they beat Northwestern he said inside the locker let's keep blowing these teams out of the tournament <laughs> and they have listened and he said that they were bulletproof and they look by all accounts bulletproof chip now they face the winner of Illinois and Iowa State the top rated defense against the top rated offense take your pick I think either one's going to lose to UConn in the Elite Eight. I mean, this is a – seriously, this right. is a UConn team that th through 60 minutes of NCAA tournament basketball has trailed for 28 seconds. That's it. 
They have been steamrolling everyone in their path, including the best team from that vaunted Mountain West Conference. Uh, I just, I've seen more time that UConn is leading by double digits uh, than I see most other teams even leading at all in the NCAA tournament so far. So I, I tend to believe that while Iowa State and Illinois are going to be out there throwing haymakers at each other and wearing each other down, you know who's waiting after playing in the early game, just getting all iced up and, and rehydrated, ready for Saturday night? It's the reigning champs, the UConn Huskies. Chip Patterson, Adam Finkelstein here on CBS Sports HQ. Another UConn victory, another blowout. This time, a 30-point blowout of the team they beat to win the national championship last year, which takes us to this. Defending champs to reach the Elite Eight since 1990. Well, before tonight, the past 15 defending champs had failed to reach the Elite Eight. The last one was Florida in 2007. And uh, they're on that path to do what Florida did in 06 and 07, which is repeat as national champs. Back out to Boston, Matt Norlander standing by where UConn dominates once again next on CBS Sports HQ. Get right to the site. Welcome to CBS Sports senior writer Matt Norlander who joins us from TD Garden in Boston. Matt, they said that they were bulletproof. Dan Hurley said that they're just going to keep blowing teams out of the tournament. They have followed suit. What are you saying about this team right now? I'm saying this team is looking like it is coursing toward being the best team in the history of UConn's men's basketball program. It's going to need to get to a Final Four to validate that. But, you know, I was talking to the great writer, Charlie Pierce, before they tipped here on Thursday night, and he was telling me, and Charlie's been around a while now, and he was saying, this UConn team is reminding me of one of the very best teams I've seen since 91 Vegas, that UNLV team that won in 90 and then obviously lost to Duke in the semis in 91. And... Uh, at the time, I said, Charlie, and there's been some good ones there. 96 Kentucky, the 99 UConn team, 99 Duke, obviously 2012, 2015 Kentucky. 05 or 09 Carolina, but they're they're moving this way. I mean, they continue to dominate this field. Through three tournament games so far, UConn has won by an average of 28.7 points. Uh, I was talking with some fellow writers. I talked with GP, Gary Parrish on the Ion College Basketball Podcast earlier on CBS Sports Network. I said, last year they beat San Diego State by 17. Are you taking the over or the under on that margin? And GP took the under. I said, I'm taking the over. Until I see a team prove that it can actually hang with UConn, I am not going to do anything but pick UConn to blow teams out a 30-point margin, and they do it without Donovan Klingon having a good game. I mean, it's just one play after another after another. This was not even, Hakeem, this was not even a UConn A-level performance. I give it a B-plus at best, and what do you want from me? Uh, I, I'm going to repeat what I have written a couple times. I'm going to say it again. I'm sure there's a team that can beat UConn. I have no idea who is beating UConn in this tournament. Three down, three to go. All right, well, you're leading me to a question, and I was going to ask you maybe two questions from now, but which team is going to beat this team? Well, take your pick. You got the best offense against the best-rated defense in Illinois and Iowa State. Take your pick. Yeah, listen, in this in this Illinois-Iowa State matchup, like I, th I think Illinois suits up to be a better team face UConn because it has such serious talent because Terrence Shannon Jr. has uh, been awesome so far. I mean, we'll see whatever team gets out of here and actually has to do the two-game turnaround can, and can handle UConn. Um, that's going to be a huge, huge task. But because of Illinois' size, its shooting ability, I think it's got a better chance overall. But um, it's going to be a massive task. Again, UConn can be defeated. That is possible. That's on the team table, but they just haven't given signals that it's going to happen. If you go back and really look, Hakeem, going all the way back to the week before Christmas, it's only been taken out once, and it was a road game against Creighton, a team that's very familiar with uh, with UConn and has a really good starting five. They don't play road games in the tournament, so uh, I was just really impressed by Stephon Castle's emergence here in this game. Tristan Newton was reliable, as always. Cam Spencer had a few big shots that I actually thought give, gave UConn the cushion that it needed in some spots where San Diego State might have had some confidence there. 
But uh, this is no shame on San Diego State. Only 52 points against UConn. You hate to see it, but it really just speaks to the dominance of this Huskies program, which is strutting and strolling. And it's got to get a couple more here, but it is really moving toward uh, college basketball immortality. And I said it earlier in the day on Thursday, I, this team is better than the team that won the title last year. It is, and so far, its performance in the tournament is matching last year's group, which was statistically one of the very most dominant runs we've ever he seen in the history of the tournament. Connecticut turning Boston into stores north as they look to get all the way to the West Coast into Phoenix and repeat as national champs. Matt Norland from Boston here on CBS Sports HQ. Matt, thank you. We got more Sweet 16 coverage, full highlights and reaction after every single game as we continue into Friday. Who will be elite as we whittle the field down to the final four by the weekend? CBS Sports HQ Sweet 16 coverage continues. Coming up, full highlights of the beat down in Boston. UConn back in the Elite Eight for the second year in a row. Dan Hurley and the Huskies look bulletproof. Next on CBS Sports HQ.